So this video is about showing you how to undertake the buckling response of a cylindrical structure. And that's a thin world cylindrical structure. So we're going to go into the video. I'll show you the theory behind it and how you can set this up in Abacus. Wait to the end where I will show you how to plot the buckling profiles for different modes of buckling associated with this type of deformation. Let's see back and relax as we get into this video. Right away, this is very clear, cylindrical structure. And with this cylindrical structure, what we have is a thin wall cylindrical structure with a given diameter, a defined height. It's fixed securely at the base and with a pin support at the top. So this is a classic representation of a profile that will undergo buckling deformation. So the diameter will be 20 millimeters and the length of the cylinder will be 60 millimeters. It's got a very small thickness of one millimeter and just a very small force of one newton at the top to activate the deformation. Ultimately, we're going to then run the simulation until we see what buckling response this structure undergoes. We're going to look at 10 modes of buckling. That means we're going to look at 10 possible profiles associated with this buckling. And then in the end, the material that we're going to be looking at will be a steel material with a yacht volume of 210 gigapascal and a puzzle ratio of 0.33. So if we look further into this problem, so to be able to generate the buckling profile associated with the system. So what we're going to see here will be, I'm going to isolate a center node, as a set of nodes in the center of the structure as seen here. And that center node, I'm going to track it as a path and then subsequently generate the buckling profile associated with this. And we're going to plot all the buckling profile for every of the 10 modes that we're looking for in this study. So let's go into our backlist as we begin to get started with this modeling. So here we are in Abacus, and the first thing we're going to do is to create the part. So the part is going to be a cylinder, so we, and I'm going to use a, a shell that's going to be extruded. So that's what we're going to do. So the first thing we need to do here is basically to create the, the circle. So the, the center of the circle will be 0, 0, and because it's a 10 millimeter circle, so 0, 10 will be the diameter, 20 mil, because it's a 20 millimeter circle, so we're going to have a 0, 10 millimeter circle for here. And then once we got that, with then extrude the model and I want it to be 60. So and that's our cylinder. We're happy with this particular cylinder and how it's looking and whatever. So we're happy with this. So the other things that we're going to make it a steel material and what would a steel material? So we'll create the steel and it's got 2 e to the power 3 and 0 0.33 is the, puzzle, is the properties of the steel. So we create the section. So this will be our steel section. So we're going to make it a shell material with a homogeneous material as well it's a shell structure so what we have is that we want the thickness of this material to be one millimeter like we said still going to be associated with steel as usual nothing everything is fine so we've got a steel section and then we can create a, a, an instance of this so that's an instance of the cylinder so if we go back to the part module under the cylinder module so we're going to look at a few things so i'm going to get some sets so i'm going to say top edge set so this is supposed to be my top edge, I hover there, so that's fine. And then we can do the same bottom edge set as well. So, and then we'll highlight that at the bottom and we'll say that. Remember I said I wanted to introduce a, an edge at the end. So I'm going to, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to introduce some datum elements. So here it's about create an offset of a datum. So I'm going to just use, let's say the Y, Z and at zero. So this is a vertical datum. This is probably about right. For me so i'm going to use it to partition this system so if i click on this and hold and then i'm going to select this which is the option for using a datum plane and it says select the datum plane which is this and then i create my partition so i've got that at my edge then i need to create a set for that edge so center edge okay and i highlight one of them so and this is fine so this way i've created a set of nodes associated with that center edge so then we can do a section assignment. So I select everything here and that becomes my center assignment element. So this is fine. And then I can mesh the model. So what is the meshing? So it's recommending six. Why not let me make it a little bit three? And then that becomes something like that. So I'll select the system again and maybe quad dominated will be fine with the media as this removes my transition. And then we can mesh that and the model is fine. I mean, I could probably mesh it a bit finer, 1.5. And then we mesh it. And that looks an acceptable model 
for us because we are trying to do buckling response i'm probably going to rein the system in a vertical way ultimately so that everything will look okay during its use so i'm happy with this representation so i'm going to see, click here and save these views as user save this current view so that even if i go to other views once i go to one it comes back by default and it works for me so let's create the set associated with this i'm going to call it my buckling buckle step and this will be linked to a linear a perturbation and a buckling step so within this buckling step we can see what we're trying to do so i would normally work with this the eigen solver is subspace for well, where the buckling modes you're looking for is not that many that's about less than 20 then the subspace will normally work very well so we're going to work with 10 of them and i'm going to use as many as maybe 20 vectors for iterations to this time but we do have a lot of iteration because we're asking for a lot of buckling node we want it to look at for a lot of iterations for this to work so we work with all that and that looks fine and then we can go and look at boundary conditions so if i click here so i'm going to say fixed the base so i'm going to just make an initial buckling condition symmetry and we select the buckling the bottom edge that we identified initially and then we fix it in castro because it's securely fixed so let's put some reference point at the top so we'll select that region so this is our reference point and i could go ahead and create a set for that reference point so within the assembly module i'll call it a reference point set and that would obviously be associated with this so again i could go also still within the futures mode and then i'll just rename that and call it a reference point all right so we have a model that looks about all right so we just need to create a constraint so that constraint here would then be pinned top edge so let's call it pin top edge it's going to be a rigid body pin top edge and and this is basically what we need we want to pin the nodes associated with that so the first thing is that we need to select the nodes of interest which is the top edge nodes so we can highlight where it is okay fine and we need to associate that with a reference point which again is the reference point set that we created initially and once we have that fine so what basically means that we are pinning the top so when we apply a load at this reference point it's going to then transfer like you're applying it everywhere around the top and the top is pinned so it's only see one type of deformation so that's what we're going to do so we're going to apply a concentrated load so which i'm going to call it my buckle force so it's going to be associated with that buckling step that we wanted it's going to be a concentrated force and we want to apply it at that point and like i said it's just a single load it's in the z-axis in this case so if you look here the system is oriented in the z-axis vertically so we are going to then have to apply that in the z-axis which is this so i'm going to make it minus one because we want to apply it in compression so basically this is what the model looks like and we'll set it up so that it's compression buckling from the top the system is and it's got that 10 modes of deformation so we just simply go and set the job so so it's an axial buckle load compression and then we can submit the job to run so the model has finished running so let's just visualize the results okay so if we look at the first case so this is a very first buckling formation so what we can see is the first buckling mode which looks like this and so it gives us an eigenvalue of about 4.1 times 10 to the power minus 5 which is not so you can see a simple gentle buckling deformation so if we move on to the next one this another buckling mode and then the third one you begin to see sort of a third order buckling mode on the system if you move on to the fourth one there's another buckling mode the fifth one the sixth one the seventh one and then you can just keep going that way and so this is sort of what we see with the buckling deformation of the system so if we then just animate it to just tell us what you see so you see initially the system begins to buckle and then more of the buckling mode begins to show evidently in the structure so we can go ahead and try and exaggerate what we are seeing so currently it's on uniform so if we to try and do about two so you can see a more significant buckling deformation associated with this system so this sort of behavior is what you will see when you're looking at the different modes of buckling and so this is one of the beauty of this kind of simulation so clearly what we want to also look at is to see if we can extract some information around the actual physical uh, profile for this buckling so what we're going to see is that under the part module we're going to right click on the part and say create so i'm going to create so let's call it a center notes path path okay 
and it's on the node list so will continue so it's asking us how do you want to do this i'm going to use a node set for my for this so if we click on the node set remember they were not set that we determined initially at the beginning so this was the center node i'll transfer that to the system and click ok so it's highlighted this node set for me and then i click ok so if we then open this up we can see where the node set so it's clearly identified that those node sets are right in the center of the structure and that's fine so this is what we want to see can we track what's happening with this node set so you can track this as one part if you want to follow another part you can do the same so basically we have a node set identified initially and then we said okay so we can then look at the data associated with that so we're going to work with this and we're going to work with the path as creating our xy data and then it's clearly identified the path so this is a part of interest and since that node is identified i'm going to plot it with the undeformed because we want to see what the deformation will look like with respect to what it was at the initial undeformed the deformed profile we can also plot but it makes sense to refer back to the undeformed state so that the original geometry of the of the, of the cylinder will be what you're working with okay so i'm going to include every possible intersection uh, clearly has already picked that up so sort of redundant but i would like to do that and then we're looking at the true distance between that and that point and all the deformation so our buckling step we're going to start with the very first case which is the base state I apply it so this is what we see in the base state and then we're going to track the displacement magnitude which is really which is what we, we want here and then once we do that we plot and not surprisingly there is nothing going on with the displacement the displacement is perfect because it's a base state there's no buckling that has happened in the structure so we're going to go on to the next one which is buckling so with that first state what I'm going to do with that first state is if you look at the xy data so I'm going to call this just rename it and call it base state so base state which is the undeformed system it's always good to have this reference as you begin to assess your system so why not if we go to base one and apply that so if we go to that then we can begin to see okay there's a slight change in the formation of the structure so sort of bending a little bit if you're getting to buckling it's not a dramatic buckling but it's a first mode buckling and we can plot what you see okay so we see some sort of initial buckling profile associated with this in this sort of distance mode and that and it's picking up a buckling of just around one millimeter for this system so this is fine and we go back here and say rename that i'm going to call it mode mode one so which is the first state so we can move on again and look at the next step which is mode two so we apply that so if we again look at the data that we have on our graph so the system is still like that and then we plot okay similar to the other one but just we're getting some coverture in the deformation of the structure so we then look at that and then that will be my mode two so i'm going to run through all that and show different modes and then we can compare all that so if we look at mode three apply that and what's happening to mode 3 there's this significant difference and then you plot so we're beginning to see some sort of variability in the data and then we can okay look at that and then we say i'm going to look at mode 3 and then we can keep going so for okay so we've got off to the tenth mode here so what i'm going to then do is we're going to start with mode the base state and then we're going to add mode one to it so if i add plot to mode one so you can see the base a lot happens and then you get a mode one to it if i add mode two to, to this plot so you get a similar kind of deformation between mode one and mode two um, and which obviously will have a different um, oily buckling load and then we can add mode three to it as part of just observing what's happening so when you get into mode three this then becomes a little bit unstable and that's where we started seeing that uh, quite a lot of oscillation through the structure and then we can look at mode 4 is similar so if you look at mode 5 so mode 5 has more instability in the system and then we can look at mode 7 i would quickly go to mode 7 so we get some sort of almost repetitive behavior so it, it begins to show that these modes are being dominated by these oscillations in the buckling profile of the structure and then if you look at mode 9 mode 9 looks like that and then finally mode 10 so you get really interesting behavior across the structure what clearly is showing is that the lateral deflection of this beam is of this pillar of this cylinder is dominated by what's happening with mode one and mode two but as, you, as soon as you go beyond mode one and mode two you begin to see what's some quite oscillatory behavior and so this is how you can visualize the actual buckling profile for a structure like this
based on that very information. So if we go back to what we had at the beginning, you can see that this is what we see under the buckling profile of this structure. So you have these really very interesting different modes of deformation associated with a cylinder undergoing a buckling, a buckling deformation. And it's got these different modes of buckling, beginning with a very gentle buckling right at the beginning to what you see later on. So these very interesting predictions are what you see associated with a system undergoing a cylinder undergoing buckling deformation. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about abacus tips and tricks similar to what I've shown here, then this playlist will be an important playlist for you to look at. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.